Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at a really good problem involving the quotient rule with trig functions. Now, a question like this or a variation of it always tends to be a standard question on calculus one tests and exams. So let's go through this to make sure that you fully understand it. Now, it seems straightforward. We have a fraction or quotient, so we'll apply the quotient rule. The difficulties, they're going to come up when we try to simplify our derivative. So let's go through divide and conquer here, and then we'll worry about the simplifying later. So we'll identify the numerator f of x as sine of x, and the denominator g of x as 1 plus cosine of x. The derivatives are straightforward here. f prime, the derivative of sine, that comes out to cosine, and g prime, just be careful with that. 1 is a constant, that differentiates to 0, and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. All right, we have all of our pieces. We just need to combine them back together with the quotient rule, and we're going to take our time in simplifying that. So our function is y, we're going to get the derivative as y prime. And let's put our pieces back together. The quotient rule says we have f prime times g, so cosine of x, times, use a set of parentheses, 1 plus cosine of x. The quotient rule has a minus, and the next part is now f sine of x. times g, which is negative sine of x, and use parentheses there. All right, and that's all over g squared, which is now 1 plus cosine of x squared. All right, now to simplify this, one tip I like to give my calculus students is keep your denominator factored. And that's because if you simplify the numerator, you might be able to cancel out a common factor. Now just be careful, there's a common mistake here. You have 1 plus cosine of x in the numerator, but it's not a common factor. That minus or subtraction sign is preventing that. If that minus sign were multiplication, then that whole numerator would have a bunch of factors, and then you could cancel 1 plus cosine of x out with a factor in the denominator. So here, the minus prevents that. Very common mistake that I see in my Calculus 1 course. Now, we can simplify the numerator by distributing cosine of x through the parentheses, and then noticing we have a negative times a negative, which will become a positive. All right, we're gonna take our time with this. We're gonna distribute here and get cosine of x Distribute again, and you're going to get plus cosine squared of x. The two negatives cancel to a positive, and we'll write sine of x times sine of x as sine squared of x. And again, we're going to keep our denominator factored and keep it as 1 plus cosine of x squared. And there we go, that is our derivative, but we can still simplify it further. Always be aware, as soon as you see squared trig functions, you can probably apply a Pythagorean identity. That's exactly gonna be what we do here. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals one. And we're gonna be able to rewrite those last two terms as one, so we get in our numerator, cosine of x plus 1 divided by 1 plus cosine of x squared. And now, at this point, we have a factor of 1 plus cosine of x that we can cancel out. Just make sure you see that here. We can switch the order with addition 
And that numerator, we can rewrite it if we want to as one plus cosine of x in case you don't see it. Again, just be careful. We have in the numerator at this point a factor of one plus cosine of x in the numerator, but not here. That minus prevents that. So we can simplify. I'll be a little bit sloppy. One factor cancels out in the denominator. So we have now in the numerator one, and then one power less in the denominator. And we can write that denominator now as just one plus cosine of x. No power on the outside there other than one. And there we go. This is a really good problem. Again, it's a standard problem on tests and exams towards the beginning of a calculus one course. The difficulties, again, are not in applying the quotient rule, but here in the middle in simplifying. And us professors love to give problems like that. The derivative is straightforward, but it's the simplifying that's the tricky part. Just be on the lookout for that. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.